My heart is ready. those hands together all over this place real quick come on come on if God's been good to you you can do better than that I said put those hands together like you're gonna clap them off this morning because we know we serve a mighty God come on if you know you serve a mighty God can you open your mouth tell God how much you love him tell God how much you need him is real simple this morning. Goes like this. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive the blessing. 
everything from you A blessing from you One more time My hands are lifted up My heart is ready to receive A blessing from you A blessing from you Unison one voice. My hands are lifted up. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready. My heart is ready. To receive. To receive. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Oh. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. My hands are lifted up. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready. My heart is ready to receive. To receive. Blessing from you, yeah. Blessing from you. Blessing from you. A blessing from you. Can y'all split it up for me? My hands. Come on and open your mouth. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. I'm not looking from, from my mama, not my daddy, not my sister, not my brother, but from you. A blessing from you. <laughs> when I'm down in the valley low, I just need one blessing to lift me up out of that thing. Uh, A blessing from <laughs> you. 
I don't know about you, but we came to give God praise in this place this morning. Amen. A blessing. A blessing from you. Because I heard somebody say when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Amen. A blessing from you. And if God was to give you your blessing dictated by your praise, somebody need to give God their best in this place. Amen. From you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Yeah, yeah. A blessing from you. My hands are lifted. My hands are lifted up. My heart. My heart is ready to receive. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Last time right here. A blessing from you, yeah. A blessing. Now come on and put those hands together real quick. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on and put them together for Jesus this morning. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm so excited to have my brother AJ here this morning. Come on and give him a round of applause real quick. Let's jump back into it real quick. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth? Y'all got it out there. Come on, you. You set your glory above. The heavens and the earth. Whoa. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, there's no praise that's high enough to express how great you are. The mighty God we serve. What a mighty God.
we serve mighty God we serve can y'all say it real quick heaven and earth What a mighty God, what a mighty God. Yeah. Oh, oh, eh. Hey. Angels, they bow, angels, they bow. Lift your hands up real quick, say this. Say, all glory, all honor, all praise, all praise. All glory, all honor, all praise, all praise. Give God the highest praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. To the mighty God, we serve. Y'all come on back, mighty God. Mighty God, we serve. Angels, they bow. Angels, bow before the mighty God, we serve. Now come on and put those hands together all over this place. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Is there anybody out there that you can testify that you serve a mighty God? Yeah, they're, they're feel you. you. You celebrating your mama God right now. I want to talk to the folk that you know because of what he's done for you, that he is a mighty God. We serve a mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the Lord's house. We are grateful to have you to come and be a part of our worship experience. If you're here uh, for the first time and you've received one of our connect cards, please fill this out. Uh, you can detach this little part that detach, keep it. There's information about the ministry in small groups. And then drop this card in the offering basket as you're leaving out the door. We want to let you know how much we appreciate you being our guest this morning. And want to encourage our members, grab you some of these uh, visitor, visitor cards, put them in your wallet, put them in your pocketbook. Uh, when you meet somebody that asks you about the church, man, give them one of these cards. I try to pass out at least two a week, and the thing is, you don't have to look for people. God will send people to you. And remember, it is your not your responsibility if they come, it's just our responsibility to tell the story and to invite them. And so uh, grab some there out there. And also, there are plenty of these little hand sanitizers you can put in your pocketbook, put in your car. Take as many as you want, only if you're going to use them. <laughs> Take as many as you want. Uh, there are plenty out there. If we run out, there, there is more. Uh, and so we encourage you to grab some. Um, Josh, uh, what you got that AC on? I'm a little warm today. Is it me? I, I understand being uh, warm in the spirit, but you cut the air off, didn't you? Also, next week, next week, we're excited. We're excited. Next week, we're going to start our new members class. It will be in person uh, from 1125 to 1225 there in the fellowship hall. Uh, wonderful material, Brother Ken Bell. Stand up so they can see you, Brother Ken Bell. He's going to lead in this and teach in this. He's been preparing for several weeks. Uh, and so if you are a new Christian, if you're new to the church, this would be a great start for you. If you are a believer and you've been out there for a while, but you've never really been discipled, it would be a great class for you. Uh, and so this is a wonderful book that deals with a lot of the fundamentals, the basic of what Christianity is, 
and what's expected of you as a believer and as a church member. So I want to encourage those of you, these books will be ready for you uh, next week, next week. So please show up, uh, get your young people. If you know you have young people that were just freshly baptized, uh, get them out to class. It will be starting next week. Uh, and it will go for probably, I don't know, four or five weeks before we start another one. Uh, but a great opportunity for you. If you just want to get refreshed in what God requires of us, uh, come out and be a part of that. And so, Brother Bell, thank you so much for giving us leadership in that. Um, I want you to be in prayer for uh, the pastor of Cross Life, Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob had surgery. Uh, last week he has uh, prostate cancer, uh, but I believe they got it all out. But we want Word of Change to be in prayer for him. Uh, he's in a good place. He's feeling good about it. So we just want to unite our faith with his. And while I'm saying this, I believe God can work all things out for the good. Listen, men, go to the doctor. Get your prostate check. Uh, don't walk around with this. I'm going to say this, and it may offend you, but sometimes I have to offend you to get you to do something. Stop walking around saying this stupid stuff. I don't want to know. Ignorance will kill you. Because there's some stuff we don't have to die from if we just go to the doctor. And somebody says, well, I don't have no insurance. Uh, you don't have insurance on your car, but you still drive. <laughs> All I am saying you should be important enough for you that you save up to go to the doctor. And if you don't, listen, come talk to me. We'll get you an exam. We'll get you an exam. Men, you need to go to the doctor at least once a year. Women, of course, and women do better than men. But I know black men, we die when we don't have to die. And so I, I want to encourage you, get yourself checked out so you can be around that God can use you in a mighty way. Grab your Bibles if you would. Stand, stand, grab your Bibles. Turn with me to the book of James. James, uh, the half-brother of Jesus. James chapter 1, James chapter 1. want to thank Reverend Peak for doing an amazing job last week. Didn't she pre last, preach last week? Amen. Wonderful job. James chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading at verse 21. James chapter 1, verse 21. If, if you don't read any other book in the New Testament, James would be one you ought to jump in. I believe James is the New Testament version of Proverbs. Very practical. Gets right down. He don't jump into a whole lot of theology. He just pretty much tell you what you need to do as a believer. So a good book to start off with as a believer. James chapter 1 and beginning at verse 21. And we'll read the remainder of the chapter. James says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans, and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Verse 23 and 24, if you would. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. Just before you sit down, I want to talk to you from the subject, mirror, mirror, on the wall. 
You may be seated. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It was in 1973, Disney premiered what will become one of Disney's greatest movies ever, Snow White. Snow White is about this wicked queen who had a magical mirror. And every morning she would go to this mirror and she would say, magical mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And every day the mirror would tell the queen, you are my queen. See, the thing about the mirror that made it magical is not that it had the ability to talk. Because all of our mirrors talk. Of course, this mirror had an audible voice, but all of our mirrors talk to us. When you stand in front of your mirror, your mirror tells you you picked up 10 pounds. You might not like to hear what your mirror has to say, but your mirror is telling you that your hair is thinning. The mirror talks to us. And so the ability that the mirror could talk was not what made it magical. I believe what made it magical is that it had the ability to lie. Because mirrors don't lie. Mirror only reflects what it sees. This mirror had the ability to lie to this wicked queen every day and tell her she was the best looking thing in the world. And some of you got some magical mirrors. Because you walk around thinking as if your stuff don't stink and as if you the finest thing in the world. And you should have a level of confidence. But this mirror lied to her every day until one day Snow White comes of age. And Snow White is so beautiful that even a magical lying mirror has to tell the queen, I'm sorry. But there is one in the land. Can I pause and tell you? The reason why you don't have to worry about folk who lie on you and who gossip about you. Because one day the anointing on your life is going to be so great that even your haters going to have to admit that God is doing something in that person's life. He finally had to say that there is one. And the rest of the movie is about this wicked queen trying to kill Snow White simply because of how God created her. Can I tell you there's always a danger when you spend more time looking at others instead of looking in your mirror. When you spend so much time analyzing other people's life instead of looking in the mirror and having a real honest conversation with you and your mirror. Most of us don't like to look in the mirror. We glance in the mirror. Because it's, it's a challenge sometimes, and try this, to just stand in the mirror and look yourself in the eye. Because most of us don't want to come face to face who we really are. We like living with this false perception that we have about who we are. You, you, ever, you ever saw a picture of you and you'd be like, you, you, you ever saw a picture and, and you realize, hold on, uh-uh, ain't, ain't that fat? They must have caught me at the wrong angle. Because here's the truth, here's the truth. Most of us have this image of what we look like. Okay. Okay, y'all looking at me now. We have this idea of how we look, and, and we walk around as if we got it going on because we don't spend a whole lot of time in the mirror. And when we do look in the mirror, we only look at that what we like. That's why most people don't have full-length mirrors. They only want mirrors that they can see from here on up. Because I don't want to have to deal with all that down there. And that's the same way it is in our spiritual lives. When we look in that spiritual mirror, we only want to look at what we're doing right and not being honest about what we need work on. Can I tell you the mirror can be a scary thing when you're honest? 
When you get there, you have to really look at yourself and deal with yourself and quit lying to yourself and quit thinking that you are what somebody else says. You know, you, you, you're who what people believe you to be. No, the truth is I am what I am in the dark. I am what I am when nobody else is looking. Not what people perceive me to be. God deals with me beyond my titles. Beyond what you say about me. God has the ability to look past all of that and look down in my heart and find out exactly who I am. The question I need to ask you is who do you see when you look in the mirror? And that's where James is in this text. James says, first, put away all the filth that's in your life. And that's what Christianity is all about. It's about us becoming more and more like Christ every day. The process of sanctification, dying to self, dying to old behaviors, dying to old conversation, dying to old stuff you used to do, and becoming more and more like Christ. But if you're not careful, you'll fall into this rhythm that a lot of us have in church. We dress up. And we pretend for the time that we're around other believers. And as soon as we are away from other believers, then the real us come out. Oh, most of us like Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, you can shout and hallelujah up in the sanctuary, but cussing on your way out the door. Because you want to put up this facade as if, hear me, I don't know why we do it. Why am I trying to impress you? Well, why am I faking for you when all of us are in the same boat? It's just that you have learned to dress your dirt up better than my dirt. But at the end of the day, can I tell you something that may be shocking to you? Dirt. It's just dirt. You can put rocks in it. You can pull grass over it. But at the end of the day, it's just dirt that's dressed up. And you got to get to the place where I'm not trying to impress dirt <laughs> with my dirt. James says, put away all the filth in your lives and humbly accept the word that has been planted in your hearts. So as a believer, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have accepted his word. You believed in your heart and professed with your mouth. The word is now in you. But are you allowing the word to do a work through you? Is the word just laying dormant on the inside of you? Have, a, have the only thing you've done as a Christian is come to church? Have this word not affected the rest of your life this thing should saturate our lives everywhere I go anything that I'm a part of I ought to bring that word with me because that word is a part of me it's not something that I pick up it's something that I live it's who I am and it's what I use to get some of this dirt off of me we don't want to talk about it but man in 54 years, I picked up a lot of dirt. 54 years, I picked up a lot of behaviors and attitudes and habits that God don't like. And all I'm trying to do as I'm making my way to heaven is drop some of that filth off of me. I, I, I don't know about some of you, but I don't like being dirty. My, my, my wife will tell you, I, I don't like being dirty. You ain't never seen dirt up under my nails. I hate dirt. But the crazy part about it, it's amazing how you can care for your physical body. But you're not so much concerned about the dirt of your spiritual body. I want to get to the place where I don't want the dirt on the inside of me. I don't want to think filthy thoughts. I don't want to participate in filthy things. I want to get to the place where I wake up to honor God and I live the life to glorify God. But it is a process. But you ought to get up every day trying to do it. 
And the way we do it is that we begin to live the word. Verse 22, he says, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. For if you just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, it does you nothing. And so the word of God is not just there for your inspiration. You know, it's a good word, Pastor. I really enjoyed it, you know. The word is more than just for your inspiration. The word is there for your transformation, but it only comes through the application of the word of God. And so if there is no application and what produced transformation, your inspiration ain't doing you no good. So you can shout, throw your hands up in the sanctuary, and you can go and live like a devil the rest of your life. It's not until you take the word and begin to apply it. Begin to stop lying. Stop cheating. Learn how to not be jealous. Learn how to, to handle your lust. It's only when you start to apply this word and actually try to live it out in your life, you can't just come in here and listen and be entertained. Too many of us, we come and we listen not for our own transformation. We listen for somebody's information. Oh, he should have been here. Oh, she should have been here. Listen, if you heard a word, guess who it was for? It's for you. You can't listen to a word for somebody else. The word of God is for your own transformation. And James says, if you listen and you do nothing with it, you're wasting your time. I love what he says. He says, but don't just listen to the word of God. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're fooling yourself. You're walking around here fooling yourself. Believing that you've been going to church and that's enough. Singing on a choir. Watch this. Preaching God's word. And you think just because you are part of church and got titles in church that somehow you are better than somebody else. But James says none of that matter if you are not allowing the word of God to transform your life. You're fooling yourself. Religion has a way of creating this arrogance in us. Somehow now we think because you are a believer and you're in church that somehow you're better than the one that's out there. Hey, sometimes they're better off because at least they're not fooling themselves. The Bible says that the church shall scarcely be saved. In other words, there are a lot of you going to go to hell through the church. I'm going home. Y'all, 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 y'all don't want this kind of preaching. Fooling yourselves. Verse 23, if you listen to the word and you don't obey it, it's like glancing at a mirror in your face and walking away and forget what you look like. So the mirror that James says we need to look into is the mirror of God's word. It is a danger to look in any other mirror. Because for far too long, we have been looking at other people's mirror to determine how good I am. I'm not like her. At least I'm not doing that. I don't do this. And you can always hear me. You can always find somebody that's doing a little worse than you. And that's why James says, don't look at somebody else's mirror. Look in the mirror of God's word. And when you look in the mirror of God's word, you ought to walk away and say, woe is me. I am a man. I am a woman of unclean lips. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who can save me from the sin of flesh? Thank God it's been done through Christ Jesus. When you start to look at everybody else to determine where you are spiritually you fooling yourself if I had another church I'll tell you to bump your neighbor and say wake up fool but I don't have that kind of church so don't, don't move he says but 
when you look, verse 25, but when you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free. He says, when you turn your head from everybody else and turn your attention to the word of God, you'll realize I have work to do. I have work to do. Then I'll go to my own mirror and we can have some honest conversation. You got to have somewhere to reflect this life we live. At some point during your day, during your week, you need to be able to reflect, how am I doing? How did, how did I do today? I, I tell the men on Ms. Monday, at, at some point during my day, mostly time, it's early in the morning before I get up, I reflect on my previous day. How did I do? How did I handle that conversation? Uh, how, how, how did I handle that situation? Did I honor God in that? And when I found out that maybe I didn't do it as well as God wanted me to do, you know what I need to do then? I need to clean it up. I don't need, I don't need to brush it up under the, the rug. No, because I'm trying to become. I'm trying to drop filth off, and the only way you can get rid of dirt is you got to clean it up got to clean it up. You can't keep telling yourself that, man, I'm better than what I am. You don't have to lie to yourself. Be honest with yourself. When you look in that mirror, have some honest conversation. Don't, don't have a wicked, magical mirror that lies to you. you. You're grown now. You did it when you were 16. Some of you 16, you, you probably still doing it, but you 50, 60 years old, it's time to be real with yourself. <laughs> it's time to put your glasses on. You, you can't wear that anymore. <laughs> I'm talking men and women. You can't wear that anymore. You, you, you don't see Pastor riding around with his wife beaters on no more. I, I can't wear that no more, Chico. There was a time I had my top down with my muscles flexed. But, but when you look in the mirror, you have to ask the question, who am I and who am I trying to be? And can I tell you, you have spent enough time trying to become what you think other people want you to be. You have spent too much time looking in your mirror and listening to somebody else's voice and determine your wealth by what you believe they say. And when you understand that this contact between you and your mirror is between you and your God and yourself, you will start to get to the place where I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to do anything to make your head turn or to make you like me or to make you think I'm this or think I'm that. I'm trying to get to a place where God is pleased with me and I'm satisfied with myself. And there's somebody in this house right now, you just grown enough now that when you look in your mirror, even though what's looking back at you is not perfect, but you've gotten to the place well, you're all right with him. He ain't perfect, got some issues, got some scars, but you know what? He's been with me. He's been with me and I'm all right with him. I'm all right with what he used to be. I'm all right with who he is and I'm all right with who he's becoming. And I'm not going to make any judgment because based on what you say when I stand in my mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. I am the only me of them all. There's not another me. I am the best thing that ever happened. I am the only me that was ever created. It does not matter if somebody is finer than me or somebody richer than me. They can never be me. And God, I celebrate you for who I am. Because when you get to the place, and I want to help somebody, when you get to the place where you accept who you are, you won't spend the rest of your life trying to impress somebody else. 
trying to be affirmed by somebody else. And it's a beautiful thing. Come here, somebody. It's a beautiful thing when you can get all the other people from out of your mirror. Oh, y'all don't want to talk, do you? Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all, you, you know when you stand before your mirror, there's a room full of people from your past. Some little mean behind girl when you were in the sixth grade. Some dude when you were in the fourth grade who told you this and told you that. And every time you look in the mirror, you hear her voice talking about you ugly. Your head is napping. Your... But when you find your identity in Christ Jesus and you stand before your mirror, you say, you know what? I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I'm above and not beneath. I am beauty in his eyes. James says, James says, when you learn how to take the word of God and begin to apply it in your life, you won't forget what kind of man you are. King James says, if you look in the mirror and you don't do it, it's, you don't take the word of God, it's like a man that look in the mirror and forget what manner of man he is. You begin to live by the word of God. You understand then that the word of God rules my life. So it does not matter where I am. It does not matter what room I'm in. I know who I am. I am a child of the king, and that should determine how I function in any room. And there's some of you, come on, stay with me. Don't, 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 don't get distracted. Stay right here because somebody about to get delivered. And that's most of our problem. We so easily to be distracted when God is trying to get something that's going to transform your. Yeah, he says, here it is. I'm almost done. Verse 26. If you claim to be religious, mm, I'm coming after you right now. If you claim to be religious, it does not matter all of that mumbo jumbo. It does not matter if you are yada basa, yada basia. It does not matter if you speak in tongue, if you don't know how to control your tongue. Because there are some folk who can speak in tongue, but they can't control their tongue. He says, if you can't control your tongue, you fooling yourself. In other words, you call yourself a child of God, but you still have the same conversation of the devil. And James says, the only way that we can control this tongue is through the Holy Spirit. And we got to pray every day, God, take control of this thing. Because this thing is like a pink tongue nader. It'll come and destroy homes. It'll destroy relationships. It'll destroy marriages. It, it'll cause people to lose their jobs. If you don't control it, you fool yourself that you are religious. Controlling is not just using profanity, though that's an important thing. And as a believer, you ought to leave some of the little three-letter, four-letter words out of your vocabulary. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so I know that one day I will be judged by every idle word that comes out of my mouth. And so I need to think before I speak. As a matter of fact, James in the same chapter says we ought to be slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to anger. In other words, everything that comes up shouldn't have to come out. You got to be able to control this thing. And sometimes you need the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes you want to let folk know some stuff. Come here, somebody. Y'all looking at me funny. Sometimes, even though you love Jesus, every now and then you want to let folk know that I knew the devil. Because some folk can push your butt like nobody else can. But you got to learn how to hold your tongue because you want to glorify your father that is in heaven. And so instead of cussing them out, you ought to go ahead and bless them out. Sometimes you just got to look at folk and just say, Jesus. And y'all know black folks, we can take one word and depending on how we say that word, folk know what we're talking about. Because I can say Jesus one way, but if I say Jesus, you, you better get a little further away from me because I realize I'm still human, but I, I want God to control this thing. I don't want to say stuff that don't glorify him. He says, the one who says he is religious 
but don't control his tongue. You're fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. It's in vain. What are you using your mouth to do? Are you using it to build or to destroy? Are you using it to bless or to curse? Well, James says, clean water and filthy water can't come out of the same fountain. Uh, it don't matter what you say behind the mic. It's what you say at your house, in your car. I never forget, I never forget when I became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ in 1993, uh, English was my second language. Profanity was my first. I can cuss you up and down, back and forth. I had learned how to put words together that the dictionary couldn't put together. But I knew that I could not be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and have such a filthy mouth. And there was no preacher who told me this, but I realized that if I'm going to honor God, I got to stop this foul talking I'm talking. And i never forget that I got Ephesians 4.29. I memorized that text. And I told myself, if I ever cuss or even thought about cussing, I was going to recite that verse. Can I tell you I recited that verse 50 times a day? Let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, that it may minister grace to those that hear. And eventually, profanity was no longer part of my conversation. And if God did it for me, he can do it for you. But you got to have a desire and say, God, I need you to help me control my tongue. Because I want to glorify and I want to honor you. And then James says, and I'm going home. He says, pure religion before the Father is this. Caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Please understand that James is not giving you a check sheet. Well, okay, I'm good to an orphan, I'm good to a widow, then I'm good. But James is saying in his day when this is written, widows and orphans are those individuals who were in the most need. Because a woman who died that did not have sons she didn't have anybody to take care of her. So most of the time she had to result to prostitution or begging to survive. Orphans were those children who did not have a mother or father. So they too would often have to beg or prostitute themselves to survive. But what James is trying to get us to say that if you say you have religion, if you say you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, then you ought to have some service. You ought to have some compassion for the least, the lost, and the left behind. I question if you know God, if you can walk past pain and it does not affect you. I, I question if you're truly saved, if you can step over need and God has provided you with the answer to that need. He says, true religion gets to the place where God will give you a burden for those who are hurting. And so if you are the one that's doing the hurting, your religion may be in vain. And can I tell you that as God began to work on my heart, God made my heart a little softer. I used to be selfish. I didn't care nothing about you as you couldn't do nothing for me. I was done with you. But God is doing a work with this old stony heart. And now, man, when I think about people who are hurting tears, come to my eyes and I don't mind giving somebody the last that's in my hand because I realize that the God I serve sometime God wants me and God wants you to be the answer to somebody's prayer you ought to shout right now that you are on the end where you are not doing the begging but you're doing the blessing and there's somebody in this house that you thank God that God been good to you and when you realize who has been good to you, you ought to be good to somebody else. I come to tell somebody the reason why I want God to give me more is because I want to do more. I want to bless somebody else. How in the world, how in the world you call yourself a believer 
and you stingy. Oh, I got six more minutes. You talking about you love Jesus, you love God, and for God I live, and for God I die. You won't do nothing for nobody unless you're going to get something out of it, whether the devil is a liar. When God start working on your heart, you will give every dime in your pocket if God said to release it. But if you still hold it on to that like that, that's your God. Get to the place where God do a work in your heart. Man, you have compassion for folk. You see people hurting. And maybe, maybe you can't fix it. But you can pray. You can talk to them. Man, can I tell you now? I'm going home. I was, I got one more. Somebody says the third time, I got one more. <laughs> I got one. I got one more. I was. I was, I was in Columbia at this big conference, and there were probably four or five hundred preachers. And I stood and watched them as we went through the line to be served. One after the other one didn't speak to the people who were serving. They were invisible to them. While they were there learning to be better men of God. But these people were insignificant. They wasn't their church members. They knew they weren't going to see them again. They, they just common people who were here working. And so they didn't see them. And as I came through, I, I spoke to each one of them. I said, thank you for serving us today. And he lit up. And here's the crazy part. The preachers before me didn't do it. But the preachers after me. And all I'm saying, instead of pointing fingers at them, be a living example for them. You can't get caught up with folk ain't doing. You got to do what you know honors and glorify your God. So if the whole church don't do it, has God been good to you? Stan, Stan, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. And James says, how you treat those who are beneath you, the fatherless, the widows in their distress, and how you keep yourself from being unspotted from this world will determine what kind of religion you have. I found for believers one of the, one of the things that corrupts us how the world gets us is that we lie to ourselves and we tell ourselves we okay because I go to church because I tithe and you, you tell yourself that somehow as long as I do those things it makes up for all of that other stuff I do it doesn't when you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ he wants all of you. He wants all of me. And he's coming after those places that you don't see when you look in the mirror. He's coming after them places where you tell yourself it's okay. Nobody knows. He's coming. He's coming because he loves you. He's coming because those are the places that rob you of your joy, rob you of your peace. That's why anxiety still hangs around. That's why you can't shake that stuff because you're not willing to shine light in them dark places because you done got so used to covering it up. And got so used to playing the religious game 
coming to church and how you doing, brother? Blessed and highly favored. <laughs> That kind of religion sickens God. He says, I would rather you to be hot or cold. But when you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. When you're listening to a lying mirror and not being honest about where you are, God says, it sickens me and it's killing you. Maybe there's somebody today. You're ready to take an honest look at where you are and who you are and where you're going. Because one day we all are going to stand before our maker. And when he looks at you and looks at me, he wants to see his own reflection. Because every day as we're moving closer and closer to heaven, we ought to be trying to be more and more like Christ. Come unto me. All you that are tired of religion, burn out on religion that brings no life, brings no peace. It says, come unto me, all you that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Maybe you're out there this afternoon. Never gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been trying to fix yourself up and clean yourself up because some religion told you, you need to get yourself together before you come to God. No, you don't can't do it on your own come to me and I promise you he who begins a good work in you will continue that work until the coming day of the Lord Jesus Christ if you're out there right now you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ I want you to step out in that aisle and just make your way and meet me at the altar this is the day you start to change your image. And you can be able to look yourself in the eye. It's that you. You don't know the Lord, but you want to give your life to him. You want to you wanna have your sins washed away. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, profess with your mouth. And you're ready to repent of your sin. You shall be saved. And behold, all things will become new. Maybe you're already saved, but you don't have a church home. If you're out there and maybe, maybe you've been visiting the word of change, but I believe the spirit is nudging you right now to make that next step of commitment. If you want to unite with this church, become a part of our family, I want you to just push your way into the aisle and make your way to the altar. We'll wait on you. We want more family members. We, we're certainly... Excited to have guests, but and we love when the family grows. If you're out there and you want to unite with the word of change, just step out from where you are and make your way to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you desire prayer, the altar is open. Maybe you need the spirit to help you clean your mirror. Come. Hallelujah. I know. Oh, bless his name. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Grab the hand of someone close to you. Hmm.
Find your identity in Christ. Not in no one else. Not in clothes, not in hairstyles, not in cultures. Find your identity in Christ who loved you before you were even lovable. And even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And stop listen, listening to the voices of the past who told you you're not nothing, you're ugly and you're dumb and you're stupid. I come to tell you those were lies from the pits of hell. God says you're the apple of my eye. You're blessed and highly favored. You're above and not beneath. Greater is he that's on the inside of you than he that is in the world. Forget the lies of the enemy. And trust your God. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God, that that regardless of what life was before you, life gets sweeter and sweeter every day with you. But you are a God that looked past our faults, came and supplied our needs. And when we could not get to you, God, you came to us down from 40 and two generations died on a hill called Calvary shed your blood and went to hell on our behalf because you loved us what greater love than a man to lay down his life for a friend and God we know that we're precious in your sight help us now God to find our identity in you Find that affirmation, God, in you. Forgive us, God. As we looked at all those other idol gods that we thought would bring us peace and comfort and security. We thought that a bigger house, a bigger car, another job would give it. God, thank you that you didn't treat us like we treated you. Help us now, God, to see ourselves as you see us. Father, we love you. And God, we pray for those who are here. We pray, God, those who, who, who struggle every day with voices in their head telling them that they won't succeed, that they're not this, and that they're not their Holy Spirit. Silence those voices. May they hear you, God. May they hear and believe, God, that you said that we'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in the and are coming blessed and are going that grace and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives Father give us what we need even when we don't know what to ask for God give it unto us Father thank you now be with your people heal those broken places Heal those broken places, God. Go into those dark chambers of their heart, God, and allow your light to shine in it. Holy Spirit, do a great work. For God, we know the day shall come that we will stand before you. Hey, God, we want to hear your voice saying, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Bless these, your people. Bless now, God, what has been given, what shall be given. Bless it, break it, and multiply it. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of your precious Holy Spirit, rest rule about on each and every one of us, hence from now and forevermore. Amen. 
and amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a beautiful week.